God is good all the time. And I am a witness, and we are glad that you are here. Um, did anybody else notice the, the, the briskness of this morning? It's kind of nice for it to be like that. Of course, I was like, ooh, it's going to get cold. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm, I'm a South Texas girl, so. Um, anyway, we are glad you're here joining us here. We're glad that you're watching us um, or going to be joining us later um, online. And we will start by stepping it up this morning. And so I'm going to ask if you would join me in standing as you are able. And we are going to sing our opening song. I've got a home in glory land that shines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that shines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that shines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Blue Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do remember me. Blue Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do remember me. Do Lord. Jesus as my Savior, you take him to way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. I've got a home. We know that you remember us, but what you have told us is that you forget our sins when we confess them to you. So, Lord, we can come to you in boldness and in love and with joy. And so, Father, what I ask is for us, um, especially in these times that we are living in, that we would remember you and your sovereignty and your goodness and your power and your might and your love and your grace and your mercy and all the good things that you are. So, Lord, for this time, would you help us to set aside those things that have been weighing us down all the week or even lay them at your feet, and, Lord, where we could just worship you, breathe, take you in, and, um, and leave um, with a better attitude maybe than we even came in with. So we love you, Lord. We give you this time, and we ask you to multiply it greatly. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you would, please be seated. Again, I'm glad that y'all are here. I welcome y'all, welcome y'all, welcome y'all. There's several announcements, so I'm just going to jump right in on there. Um, so today at 11 o'clock, we're going to have our first communion. We've got six fifth graders that are going to be receiving their fifth, first communion today at 11 o'clock in here. Um, we want to welcome Kyle and Ashley Halbadir Anaya. They have a new daughter. Her name is Summer Sky. And so um, she's, anyway... Congratulations to them. It's a blessed little family. Um, I want to give you an update on Richard Lynch. If you did not know, he, um, he went to the hospital this last week. Um, he had AFib, and the I th last I heard, unless somebody else tells me otherwise, um, they're looking at maybe doing a pacemaker to, to get that corrected. Also, uh, Friday I went and visited Pi Hass. She is doing well. We had a great visit, and... Um, and this time I got permission to tell y'all. Last time I got in trouble because I told y'all. Um, so anyway, I'll just go there with that. All right. Um, and then I then also wanted to let y'all know that um, our members, Lisa and Jay Maddox, Maddox um, Lisa's father, Craig Blankenship, passed away as well this last week. And we're going to say an extra prayer for them because literally the week before, Jay lost his sister. 
So they have had two big losses in, in the matter of a week, week and a half. And then also speaking of, if you have not heard, um, our wonderful uh, Tanya Mayer, her father passed away Friday. Um, so there is going to be a, so, uh, a funeral and a, and a viewing. It's um, at the Greenwood Cemetery in Fredericksburg on the 26th, which is this next um, Saturday. The viewing is at 11:30. Uh, the viewing is at 11:30, and the funeral is actually at 12. And if you're going, I can't make it there. They are going to live stream it off the uh, Schaefer Funeral Home website. So, um, so we're prayers for for Tanya and Pastor Dave. We know that that was her her calling, her ministry as well. And then we have one more that we want to um, to show you as we get prepared for what's to come. This is Jonathan Kahn. We are standing at a critical moment in American and world history, a moment that can seal the future for calamity or redemption. We have driven God out of our culture and we war against his ways. If we don't return to God, America's light will go out. The answer is revival, but we only have a limited window of time. So this is the announcing of the return, the National and Global Day of Prayer and Repentance, Saturday, September 26, 2020, 40 days from the election and on the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower at America's dedication to God. Join me for a pivotal, sacred, and prophetic gathering on the National Mall, Washington, D.C. If you can't make it there, the return will be all over America. Gather in your states, your churches, your homes to pray for repentance, return, revival, and restoration on the promise if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways I will hear from heaven I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land the return is for all of God's people every denomination and on board is everybody from Pat Robertson to Dr. Dobson from Billy Graham's daughter Anne Graham Lotz to Martin Luther King's niece Alveda King and many many more surrounding the day of the return will be the 10 ancient days of prayer and repentance beginning with the Feast of Trumpets to Yom Kippur September 18th to September 28th to intensify our prayers and intercession for revival. And if you're outside America, join us on that day in your nation to pray not only for America, but for your nation and bring the return to your land. The return, September 26, 2020. Plan for it now. Spread the word in this video and go to the returnwebsite.org. That's the returnwebsite.org. The return begins now as you, me, and all of God's people not only pray for revival, but begin living in revival. It is time to seek the Lord. It's time to return. So we'll be here Saturday and uh, you should have picked up a uh, copy of the schedule. All these times are Eastern times as explained at the bottom. So uh, they're now ahead of us. And this makes a note that the keynote addressed by Jonathan Hahn it starts at uh, what the other time at 10 o'clock. So, come for the whole day, go and come, find a topic that you like, come see it, but let's pray about our country. Thank you. Amen. And, and if, you, if, if you keep up with the news at all, I mean, we thought that it, 2020 couldn't get much more turbulent. And then we've had a passing of a Supreme Court justice, and y'all know that just ratcheted it up even more so. So we need, to, we need to be a people of prayer, okay? Thank you for organizing that. Run. All right. Good thing today we're talking about prayer, isn't it? <laughs> so if y'all would, please join me. We're going to uh, read responsibly Psalm uh, 4, verses 1 and 3. Answer me when I pray to you. Make things easier for me when I am in trouble. You know that the Lord has chosen for himself those who are loyal to him. Amen. Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I have a mighty rain rainstorm coming. Here, a mighty rainstorm coming. 
So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed down low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look out toward the ocean. The servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. Finally, the seventh time his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. As, and the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm, and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. The New Testament reading is from James chapter 5, beginning with verse 13, and that's the focus of today's message. Is someone among you in trouble? He should pray. Is someone feeling good? He should sing songs of praise. Is someone among you ill? He should call for the elders of the congregation. They will pray for him and rub oil, olive oil on him in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered with trust will heal the one who is ill. The Lord will, was, will restore his health, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, openly acknowledge your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. El Eliyahu was only a human being like us, yet he prayed fervently that it may not rain, and no rain fell on the land for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the land produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you wanders from the truth and someone causes him to return, you should know that whoever turns a sinner from his wandering path will save him from death and cover many sins. Please raise, <laughs> rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, starting with verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite y'all to sit down, and here's Miss Lori. Good morning. Just a reminder, um, if, you're, if you have kids, or you know of kids that would like to attend Camp Eagle, please let Ashley or myself know um, very quickly in the near future, so that way we can get it all situated. Um, so this morning I'm doing something a little bit different because I always feel so bad that the kids don't get to be involved in the children's message. And so just be patient. It'll be good. So I brought this morning with me a newspaper. Now some of you may not know what this is because everything is online these days. But how many of you actually see your parents read the newspaper? Yeah, sometimes on Thursdays I read the newspaper because I get the Honda Anvil and so I read the newspaper and I look at the articles in there and I make and, and just figure out what's going on in the world or in Hondo that is, not necessarily the world, but in Hondo. Well, with the newspaper, there are five questions. Like when a writer is doing their newspaper article, they ask themselves who, or when you read it, who is the article about? That's a good question. What is the article about? Oh, ooh, ooh, hold on. I know, bear with me. When is when was the article? When is this gonna happen? Where did it happen? Or even why it didn't happen? Or why the article was written in the first place. So this morning, y'all have already heard the verse verses read, um, James 5, 13 through 20. And so we're not going to read it again because I'm going to have some kids share with you about that. So let's see. Our first question is who? Who should pray? I'll hold it so that way it's just my germs. Any one of these verses tell us that anyone who needs 
God's help or anyone who has received God's blessing should pray. That's all of us. Okay, our next question is what? Oh, I guess I don't have to hold that. What? What should we pray? Anything. We should pray for healing when we are sick and forgiveness from sin. We should pray, we should say prayers of thanks when we are happy. Okay. Our next question is when should we pray? Let's see. And our next question is where, where should we pray? And the last one is why should we pray? Because God answers prayers. These verses tell us that prayer is powerful, and if we pray, God will hear us. Great job, you guys. Yes, that is right. The five whys of prayer. So who should pray? Anyone. What should we pray about? Anything. When should we pray? Anytime. Where should we pray? Anywhere. Oh, I lost one. And why should we pray? Because God answers prayers. So think about that the next time that you're thinking about prayer. Think about your five W's. Why, a who, what, when, where, and why. So think about that, and hopefully you can remember from what they said about all those place things about prayer. Let's say a prayer. Dear Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Help us to remember that you want to heal us when we are sick. Help us when we are in trouble. Forgive us when we sin, and rejoice with us when we are happy. Help us to take the time to pray every single day, not when we're just having bad times, but to, to pray and sing you praises for the blessings that you give us. Lord, I ask that you fill these kids' hearts with um, the love of Jesus so it spreads out to others in our community. And Lord, I also ask you to pray for them, to keep them safe in school, to keep the teacher safe, um, I know it's hard right now, but just let them remember that everyone's trying their best, and, and, pray, and I just pray for patience for all the ones that are involved with the school. In your name we pray, amen. Wow, y'all did great. Got some, got some good readers, and I'm glad to hear it. So I'm going to start off with... Um, the questions that James started off with, basically. Is there anyone here whose life is going just really well? That you go, God couldn't get much better. Is there anyone here that's troubled by what all is going on? So what do we do? We pray. So y'all join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, um, you tell us to come to you in prayer. And so here we are. And Father, um, we ask, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us where we are and in what we need to hear. And Father, I pray that I just, I wouldn't get in the way. And so um, we give you this time again, Lord, and, and I ask you, Lord, just to multiply because we know that your word does not go out in vain and does not return back in vain either. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So today we are, we are concluding our study of the book of James. And to better kind of understand it as we're wrapping it up, a couple of things I want us to remember to kind of keep in mind on this. Remember that James is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And he went from doubting that Jesus was the Messiah to becoming a respected leader of the early church. And this letter that he wrote, he was writing to uh, Jewish Christians 
who had been scattered around and because of their persecution, um, and they were suffering because of their persecution that they were experiencing because of their faith. So James asks his readers, is someone among you in trouble? He should pray. Is someone feeling good? He should sing songs of praise. So James, again, he's speaking to the church, and he's speaking to, to the suffering and to the cheerful. He's saying when, you, when your life is going well for you, and have you all ever done it where you just sing songs, or you're just singing? Anybody else like with me, and you're in the car, and, I mean, you can turn up the radio, right, and you can just belt out some of those songs? And what he's saying with any of that, he goes, when you're, whether life is good or life is hard, come into the presence of God. And pray. And he is going to be basically talking, because well, what Johnette read, he's basically going to be talking about what happens when we're suffering or we're in trouble. But here's something I, I didn't want it to pass by us because it is a little bit part of what he's saying as well. Because our praise is directed toward God's singing is another form of prayer. Have you ever really thought about that? That when we sing, it's a way that we're praising God and and Prayer is more than just asking for what we want. It's declaring, it's saying who Jesus is, who God is. So, when we pray, whether it's with song, like the Psalms, y'all know the Psalms are, are, are poems and, and scriptures written to, to songs and to melodies. Now, when we're troubled, though, we usually either blame God for our troubles or we go to God with our troubles. So obviously what James is saying, he's saying go to God. But what about when you're tired? What about now when you're tired? 2020 has been a long year, has it not? So what happens when you're tired from the constant trouble and the suffering? Well, James tells us in verse 14, he says... Is someone among you ill? He should call for the elders of the congregation. They will pray for him and rub olive oil on him in the name of the Lord. So something that is vitally important to know about, about this passage is that James isn't necessarily talking about physical healing. He's talking more so about a spiritual healing. Again, the, these Christians who were Jewish, have, are being persecuted. They're being pursued. And so James is going beyond the suffering of the believers to those that have become weak and tired by their suffering. They're exhausted. They are fallen spiritual warriors who have lost strength, and they're tired. Now, the elders' anointing of the weak defeated believers with oil, it has the idea of restoration. When we think of anointing a lot of times, and this is what we do as well, and, and I've done it to people as well too, is I take a little bit of oil and I, you know, we make a, a cross on their head and we anoint them for a task or, for, or something along that line. But there was another kind of anointing, and that's the one that, that James is talking about here. The anointing James is talking about, he's talking about encouraging, strengthening, and refreshing worn-out believers. And it's kind of a picture of Psalm 23, that little bit in there where it talks about where the good shepherd anoints my head with oil. So we can picture the good shepherd, but another picture that came to mind for me at least is a boxer. The boxer has been in the rink, giving punches, taking punches, and he goes back into the corner, and the trainers don't go... Sorry, bud, that was a tough fight, and walk away. A lot of times they will, they will rub them with, with, with oil, with lotion or something. They, they pat them down, they give them something to drink. They refresh them, and they say, go back in. You can do this. Continue the fight. And this is more the picture that I think about what James is talking about here. You've got people, and again, they're Christians. It's not like they're, they're not, that they're lost, that they're trying to cause problems and everything. They're simply tired a fighting. And in fact, um, 
In praying with some people, I have prayed with some and they said, I have no hope. And so what do we do? We stand in the gap and we say, I, I, I claim that hope for you. I'm praying that for you. And if I, if I may, I, I think as Christians, we play into the devil's hands when we isolate ourselves and we keep our, our struggles secret. We see others, we come into church and we see others and it looks like everybody else has it together. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't know of anybody that doesn't get tired and worn sometimes. But we also know that there are strength in numbers. And we are less prone to become weary and to wander if we come alongside each other. And what this means for us as a congregation is that we do come alongside each other and we take it seriously when we see somebody struggling. And again, they might have just had a bad week, but maybe they've had a bad year. Maybe they've had a bad few years. And even here, I, I think that's why 2020 has been such a struggle for a lot of people. It's because not only are we facing the everyday life that we all kind of have to deal with, we got a nation. We got, a, we got lots going on. We're supposed to be keeping separated from each other, right? That social distancing thing. We've got people saying, don't do that. We've got people, and, and I understand wearing the mask. I totally get that. But can you see somebody when they smile at you? And I know for me, I mean, you know, I kind of now go into the store, get what I need to get, and get going. You know what I'm saying? We do, there's, we're, we're starting to, just the way some things are going, kind of separate ourselves, and that is prime opportunity for the devil to come in and start discouraging us even more, getting us tired, start picking off a few people, trying to get them to wander. So here's the thing that I want to ask you. Who do you need to reach out to? Who do you need to check on to see how they're doing? Keep in mind when you reach out to someone or someone reaches out to you, and this is an overarching thing for the church, is the church aims to turn back the wanderer or the ones that's weak, not for judgment. It's more for repentance and restoration. When we go to people and just say, you know, I've been thinking about you, we don't go, gosh, I haven't seen you at church. Got a problem? Right? We don't say that. And I'll just tell you, I, I was talking to a, a friend one time who hadn't been at church for a while, and I said, you know, it's, it's time. And she even said, she goes, I don't know if, if my life is so chaotic or if it's not going to church or what it is. And I said, well, it's probably a little both. I said, but it's time to come back to church. And here's the thing I want you to think about if, if, with that is because... She was afraid that if she came back to church, people would come up to her and say, oh my gosh, we've missed you, and I'll like, make a big deal about it, and she would feel guilty about it. But at the same time, she was also afraid that people wouldn't say anything to her at all, and that they wouldn't have even missed her. And so I said, so what, what is the right response for somebody to say to you? And she's like, I don't know. So, so just know when people come, whether they're new, whether they're, they're coming back, a lot of times there's a sensitivity to that anyway. So we're not here for judgment. We're here to, to help with the restoration and, and the relationship. Now, the weary is not necessarily the wanderer like this is talking about, but they are at risk. In James uh, 15... It says, the prayer offered with trust will heal the one who is ill. The Lord will restore his health, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, openly acknowledge your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And again, the main point here is not physical healing. It's about healing spiritual weakness. That being said, we know because we know that we pray for physical healing as well. 
Even Jesus, in Matthew starting in 4, starting in verse 23, says, Jesus was going all over Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Then the news about him spread throughout Syria, so they brought to him all those who were afflicted, those suffering from various diseases and intense pains, the demon-possessed, the epileptics, and the paralytics, and he healed them. So we know that the power is there to heal. But then also in Matthew 17, it talks about that the disciples were trying to heal people and they couldn't. And so they asked Jesus about it. And Jesus said, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So here's my question. Does it mean that we don't have enough faith if we pray for somebody and they're not healed physically? No. Here's the faith we need to have. Prayer offered in faith believes God can heal, but also trust in God's will and ways. That's huge. When we pray for someone, we know that God can heal them. We know, we, we know, we know, we know. But what we don't know is God's will. And we don't know why God is allowing this to happen. And that's where we have to just trust him. We have to trust him on that. We know that God does heal in different ways. Sometimes he heals here. And sometimes he heals at the end of life when the believers step into eternity. But a prayer offered in faith receives and accepts God's will and his ways. In Isaiah 55, starting in verse 8, it's, and we, again, this is going to be a familiar verse to y'all. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. As high as the sky is above the earth are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For just as rain and snow fall from the sky and do not return there, but, the water, but water the earth, causing it to bud and produce, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me unfulfilled, but it will accomplish what I intended and cause to succeed what I sent it to do. I mean, have you ever thought about that? How God uses hard times to build our faith. Or maybe we're going through something difficult because somebody else needs to see it and build in their faith. Have you ever thought maybe about what you're going through, that it's not solely for you? The prayers of the righteous person... Righteous meaning somebody that is in a right standing with God, which can only be done when we believe and receive the gift of Jesus Christ is powerful and effective. Now, effective here comes really from the word that means energetic. And again, do you see how that kind of feeds into the encouragement part of it? It's powerful and it's energetic. So what we see here is from the energetic prayers of a righteous person the effective prayers of the righteous call down God's power to restore struggling believers to spiritual health. And again, I appreciate that this just acknowledges that at some point we all struggle. And to illustrate his point here, James reminds them about the prophet Elijah. And, and the prophet Elijah, part of the story is what John Nett had read, but he was, I mean, goodness gracious, he was a prophet of God. He was a mighty man of God. He defeated Baal and the prophets. You know, he had, he had Jezebel after him. He was talking to Ahab and everything. And he keeps on talking about what Elijah had gone through. And Elijah was the one, after he had done all this, it showed that he was tired. 
It showed that he was hungry. It showed that he was worn out because after he had done all these great things for God, after he had been such a warrior for God, he gets to a point and he says, God, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm done. Take my life. He goes to God with that prayer. I'm going to say he goes to God with that prayer. And what does God do? He sends him ravens to feed him. He nourishes him. He says, get some sleep. Get some rest. And then he talks about these prayers that he was doing. In here, Elijah, what, and I'll just tell you, John, and I'm, the Eliyahu, that's because it's the complete Jewish Bible, that's why it was pronounced that way, but it's talking about Elijah. Elijah was only a human being like us, yet he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and no rain fell on the land for three years and six months. Then he prayed again for heavy for it. And heaven gave rain, and the lamb produced its crops. He prayed for the rain to stop. And, and the reason why he did that is because he wanted, to get, he wanted to get King Ahab's attention. That they, that they were parched without God. And then again, he wanted to show him the power of God, and he was persistent in prayer. And then he finishes off on this, and this is James finishing this off. He says, my brothers, if one of you wanders from the truth and someone causes him to return, you should know that whoever turns a sinner from his wandering path will save him from death and cover many sins. I want you to see in that, those last two verses, I want you to see the multiple blessings in there. Okay? One, the wanderer is saved. The wanderer is turned back and comes back. So the wanderer is, is blessed. The church is strengthened because the wanderer has come back. And then the third one is that someone, the one that turns back this wanderer, gets the blessing of bringing him back. So just with that one thing, there are several blessings in there. And remember that with all of this, James constantly is talking to the church to live out your faith. Live it out. And what this means for us is if when we do see someone struggling, when all of a sudden we go, you know, I haven't seen them in a while. I wonder if they're keeping up with it at home or if they're just starting to fade. Because honestly, that's something that can be happening with all this that's going on, right? Right? Reach out to them. Pray for them. I love that James, James, the once doubter of Jesus, became a most energetic and effective voice of what it means to live a daily life for Christ. And this is kind of the thing I want to wrap up with as far as the James series. Once James encountered Jesus resurrected, he is changed and devoted to serving Christ in his church. Again, the resurrection, y'all, changes everything. He went from being a doubter to being a martyr. So I want, to, I want you to listen to this story. Um, it's written by um, Hegesippus, and he was a first century Greek historian. And he recorded uh, James's death. Okay, And this historian says, Many Jews were coming to believe in Jesus as the Messiah during the time of James. So the scribes and Pharisees said to James, Be good enough to restrain the people, for they have gone astray after believing in Jesus that he is the Christ. Take your stand on the temple wall and tell the people the truth. Now, this is a picture of the temple wall, so where he, they would have had him stand is right here at the, at the corner, okay? And, and, and even when you go over there, that's what people note. So they put him up on the temple wall, and they wanted him to denounce Jesus. James replied as loud as he could, Why do you question me about the Son of Man? I tell you, he is sitting in heaven at the right hand of the great power, and he will come on the clouds of heaven. 
Instead of shying back, he spoke even louder on that. And many were convinced and glorified Jesus. Then the scribes and the Pharisees said to each other, we'd better go up and throw him down so that they will be frightened and not believe him. They yelled out, even James the righteous has gone astray. The scribes and Pharisees threw James down. Then they said, let us stone James the righteous. Because in spite of his fall, he was still alive. James turned and knelt, saying, Lord, God and Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Sound familiar? While they threw stones, someone from the priestly family shouted, Stop! What are you doing? The righteous one is praying for you. Then one of them, a workman who cleans clothes, took the club, which he used to beat out the clothes, and struck the head of James the righteous. We know that even today, Christians are pursued, persecuted, and martyred for praying and for living a life of faith in Jesus Christ. So there's three things that I would like to ask y'all to do. One is to obviously pray for Christians here and around the world. And again, not in your power, but in the power of the Almighty God, meaning Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The second thing I want you to do, if you would consider, is in front of you are prayer request cards. I would ask you to take one and write down a prayer request. You want to put your name, fine. If you don't, fine. But I want you to write down how, how I and, and a group of prayer warriors can be praying for you. There's baskets at both uh, doors. Just drop them in. But, but I do want to be praying for you. And if there's a way to pray in a specific way, I ask you to please do that. Or if you want to, however, whatever it is that you want us to pray for. And then here's the last thing. Live the practical Christian life daily that Christ has called us to. Just live it daily. It's one of truth, integrity, grace, humility, and perseverance. And do you remember how we can be patient? It's because we know that Jesus is coming again. That's how we're patient. That's how we persevere. And that's why we pray for each other, we encourage each other, and we go to God when things are troubling and when things are good. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I went down to the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear a starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, sister
sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear a starry crown, good Lord. Would y'all please um, have a seat and join me in prayer. Holy God, you are our Father in heaven who not only invites us to come into your presence to pray, Lord, you, you urge us, you want us to come to you. Father, you see the struggles that we face, you know them, and you see the joy that we have. And I pray, Lord, that whether we are in a time of happiness or in a time of horror, Lord, that we would come to you as a Father that is all-powerful and almighty. Father, we, we as a nation are living in some troubling times. And so, Lord, what we, what we pray for is for the perseverance and the stamina to continue in the fight. We pray, Father, that truth would continue to be revealed and that the lies would be fallen away. Father, we... Um, we pray for this nation as well um, as we experience the loss of uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Father, would you restore a calm and a sanity to some of the things going on? Lord, we do thank you for the birth of Summer Sky. It reminds us that you do want life to go on and that new life is always a part of your plan. We thank you, Father, for those that are going to be receiving First Communion today. Thank you for their faithfulness and for their family's faithfulness. And, Father, we also um, pray for your faithfulness in the successful surgery with uh, Andrew Hook with uh, Pi's healing. We pray, Father, for Richard Lynch um, with the decisions that are coming up and, and procedures that, that he will most probably have. We pray for Shirley Connect as she's having surgery this week. 
We pray for uh, Tanya and Pastor Dave at the death of Tanya's dad. We pray for Jay and Lisa Maddox at the death of her father. Father, we also pray for families. We pray for strong marriages. We pray for, for children, um, the love of their parents. We pray for those that are widowed and widower. We pray for those that are single. Lord, for those that are single, I do pray that you give them patience to wait for, for your chosen one. There's so much pressure at certain ages. Father, we pray for those that are, are just tired. Would you give us eyes to see them? And then help, Lord, help us to, to get out of our own comfort zone and, and truly be willing to pray for them at the moment that it's needed. And Lord, there's so many things. So we each come to you now into your presence and pray those things that, um, that we have been dealing with. Father, we know we hear, you hear our prayers because you are a good, good Father. And we pray all these things in the precious Son of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you please join me in standing as you are able as we say our beliefs through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And if you would also please join me in our words of confession. Most merciful God, we confess our sins to you. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. We come to God with our prayers of confession, and he is faithful to restore to us the righteousness that he has always destined us to live in. And so because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and his resurrection, know that you are indeed forgiven of your sins and that you can move forward into the person that God has called each one of us to be. Amen. I invite you to be seated, please. And if you would um, take a communion cup if you did not get one, just raise your hand and we'll have somebody bring it to you. If you will bend down the little tab, usually the, the clear cellophane part pops up. And if you will take that and hold it up. We remember in the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. So I say to you, take and eat, the body of Christ given for you.
And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This is my, the cup of, oh my goodness, I just went blank on that. Okay, let's think about that. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is my blood shed. Do this in remembrance of me. So I say to you, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give you his strength, give you his peace, give you everything you need for this week. And amen. So if y'all would please join me in standing when we will sing our closing doxology. Thank you, Miss Cece. Well, and I'm going to say thanks for your grace on that, too. Sometimes the brain just kind of skips a beat. All right. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his shalom peace. Amen. Now choose to stay who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. If y'all will have a seat and the ushers will usher out. And I'm glad to see y'all.